Hello and welcome. This is Layron with the Famous Grounds Academy. Today I'm going to go over uh, some very basics for new GMs or people new to Fantasy Grounds. So first things first is you want to navigate to the fantasygrounds.com website. At this point you can decide how much you want to invest or how much time you want to put into it. So essentially it does have some cost up front or you can do a subscription. Quite often you can just download the demo join some free um, weekly games that fantasy ground sponsors and check out the platform even before you go out and buy it so you can actually just get the demo download it install it and then join the community with the website so i am a community member so i've already joined but if you go to the forums on the website once you've joined you can take a look at the Fantasy Grounds game days in which this will give you an opportunity to sign up for weekly events, sometimes monthly special events, depending on what the availability is. But essentially this gives everyone a chance to play even before they decide to invest in the product, which I think is a very cool thing. It's difficult to get tables together, but I know the person who's putting this together, this is Greg's work and he does a pretty good job. So on top of that, you have support forums, you have places to share your ideas, there is a place to report bugs, there is a rule set specific channel. So you have all this available in one spot in a portal. And this is uh, the old style, um, essentially the old style uh, forums. So the next step is once you've decided if you want to invest in it, on the home page, you have standard edition, which will give you everything you need to kind of start with, uh, at least with D&D. &D. Not every rule set has SRD or a base core uh, product, but if you look at these officially licensed rule set, most of these have the core RPG or SRD included with the demo. So D&D, &D, Pathfinder, that sort of thing, they kind of have their own little kind of base package and then this license is often on sale and I believe the standard is like really like five or ten bucks uh, uh, for the ultimate or five dollars for the standard and you can just do it for a couple of months if you don't like it you can always you know, opt out I'm pretty sure they they're pretty good at giving your money back um, you want to cancel or you don't like the content that's something you can take a look at later the other thing is that once you do invest, if you buy the $40 license or the $149 ultimate license, you're going to um, benefit from that for the rest of your duration with the platform. So you don't have to keep buying or subscribing every month. And the nice thing about this is that once you've pay paid for the ultimate, you can host anyone. You don't have any trouble with uh, people who don't own it. If you have just a standard, your other players will have to have standard. This does not allow you to have demo users. And if you do, it used to be you can host one. I don't even think that's a thing anymore, but you used to be able to host one person. But nonetheless, the, this is the limitation of the license. So the only limitation is that you can only host other people with licenses. And the advantage of the ultimate is you don't have to basically host anybody or you don't have to have anyone paying for it the GM pays for everything so the other thing is the multitude of rule sets so I'm going to be showing a little bit of the D&D &D rule set but there are tons of rule sets and there's some that are on here that are not mentioned that are community rule sets so there's some homemade homebrew rule sets or unofficially licensed rule sets and then you have all these that are displayed on the screen here plus more there's there's a couple sub uh, categories that are not displayed I think that that might get a home on here at some point in the future um, and then if you want to get started as a game master if you scroll down here to the bottom click on that link you have this really handy uh, guide here so you create a forum account get the program you install the software and then find players for your game so you can uh, go to a link that talks about creating a campaign and then it goes right to the calendar where basically it will send you to a place where people will list their games if you know if you're interested in that and this would be like getting started as a player or 
you can also post in the forum. So if you want to um, advertise a game, you can do a looking for game or looking for group or whatever in this section. So there's that as a resource and also on their Discord, they have that as well. And then the, of course, there's a link for the Discord. So these are all your resources in the beginning. And then not to mention, um, I represent a community inspired um, academy called Fantasy Grounds Academy. It's just essentially a fan group of people that volunteer to help you kind of get started with the platform. So if you're interested in that, we also have that. That's uh, Fantasy Grounds Academy. And once you have the software and you download it, you install it, um, then I'll we'll go ahead and take you to the next step, which is where we're going to actually talk about Fantasy Grounds. So in Fantasy Grounds, essentially, you're presented with the launcher. You do have to sign into the launcher with your um, established forum account name. So in my case, if I go to settings, I can actually um, bring up the settings and I can take and, and put the my license key number in if I have one. If you don't, that's okay. If you're just going to be a demo user, you still want to sign into this. Click on login and then save. And then you can also change your application scale UI here if you need a little bit more room or if you need to be able to see a little bit better. It just depends on what your needs are. You hit save. And once you do that, then you'll be taken back to the launcher. At this point, you will want to update Fantasy Grounds because it'll pull in any new recent changes or any of the content that you might have purchased on the Fantasy Grounds store. Now, if you are a Steam user, you want to go to the... Um, store drop down on the website and then you go to this piezo or in this case this would be a steam synchronization thing uh, once you buy something or if you're coming back to buy another th item you refresh your steam purchases and it will pull in any new changes that you've made on the steam store and on top of that if you um, are a piezo user you can also synchronize their digital store with the fantasy ground store and that'll help you get discounts or at least give you the free PDF depending on where you buy the content. And you would retrieve all your um, past purchases from the store. This includes just the PDFs and the map packs. And then you would retrieve all of your, you could send also all of your your purchases over to Paizo. So when you go to the Paizo store, you are able to essentially download the PDF because you've already paid for it if you buy it through the Fantasy Ground store. So that's a kind of a nice little perk that they have as a partnership. The other thing is if you already own everything, after you sync everything, you can go see your personal discount. So for myself, if I go to look at anything that I want to purchase, I can see the pricing for me without having to put it in my shopping cart. So if I wanted to buy some of this stuff, and because I've already synchronized my account, it will recognize that. And it takes, like in this case, some of the older Pathfinder stuff, or even the newer stuff, is anywhere between five to ten dollars off, depending on what it is. So the, basically, you're getting the PDF price, and then you also get a bundled price. So if you're trying to uh, max out your library, you do get a little bit of a price break for bundles. So nonetheless, um, I'm updating. It looks like it updated some of the um, content that I've purchased or collected over the years. So it updated my subscriptions to the Forge. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Fantasy Grounds at this point. And then once I've done that, I can get ready to start setting up my, my first adventure or my first setting or session. And then on the website, if I go back to the website, you can see that I have uh, an account already set up. And that will be the same account that I use for Fantasy Grounds. So if you sign into the website, you would also sign into the application before you get started. So that's important. And once those are connected, it makes things a lot easier. The, the other thing about the website is that there are forums to help you. You have a store. They have a, an affiliate program. So if you like to, to collect a little bit of uh, back-end revenue for yourself, maybe to, to buy yourself a new book or whatever, you can um, basically become an affiliate, which th this allows you to um, create links and sales to their product and you get anywhere from one to five percent pretend uh, depending on how you signed up and then on top of that there are other incentives for 
uh, running games like when you run stuff through the official sponsored events quite often you get forge gold which is leading me into the store under the fantasy crowns forge now this is a community driven effort this is content that is created by the community some of it's free some of it's for sale basically you buy gold and if you participate as a dm enough times you get some free gold to spend on the store which is kind of equivalent to the steam um, dlc marketplace for the uh, community for mods and such so this would be something you might want to look into uh, as you get more familiar with the platform but essentially there's a ton of content on here it's been around for over a year now i believe and it's it's matured quite a bit and I think it's a good move on the Fantasy Grounds uh, Smite Works part because before you had to do everything on the DM skills, and there are some things that are not D&D. So that, that's one of the things that, that makes this a little better. So anyhow, this is uh, their DLC store for community-driven content. Some of it's free, some of it's paid. So now that we've got that out of the way, I'm gonna actually bring, bring up Fantasy Grounds. I've already updated it, I connected my accounts. Let's say I've purchased a couple core books. Now the next thing I want to do is start setting up my own session. So the first things first is you want to create a campaign. This just means you're creating a session. You're going to pick your rule set. So if you didn't want D&D, you got plenty of others to pick from here. Some of them do not show up on here until you actually buy the content. So it depends on how the rule set's created, but most of the core um, and the most uh, major Rule sets are represented here, but like you won't see Call of Cthulhu on here until you actually buy the rule set. So there are some rule sets that are like that. But nonetheless, I'm going to pick the D&D 5e rule set. Over here, you have extensions. So if you're somebody that likes to mod and run your game with different uh, types of um, enhancements, improvements, you can do that. There's community-made ones here, and there's a few official Fantasy Grounds ones. You have some themes that you can pick from. There are a bunch of different options for these, but I, I advise to just keep it down to a minimum until you kind of get used to the, the interface. But nonetheless, once you're done here, you can decide if you want to run this on the cloud, which is a, a way to connect. It doesn't host your actual game. It only hosts the connection, the password, that sort of thing, the, the, the um, configuration to connect. Uh, the actual game's hosted on your computer. If you don't want to do that, you can just click LAN, which is your local area network. No one will be able to connect you at this point. This would be ideal if you're just getting started, checking things out, and you don't plan on having people connect to your table. So I'm gonna give this a name. So I'm just gonna put, uh, call this campaign, new DM or game as, however you wanna say it. New DM or GM. I uh, pick the rule set obviously and then you pick the configuration of how you want to host the game so again you can do cloud you can do a private LAN session where you give someone your IP address and they can sign in that way or you can do the cloud and you can actually keep it private so no one can see your your actual visibility but you're still connected to the lobby so there's different ways that you can you can offer your game up uh, if you want to do it live uh, publicly online so once you have that figured out, we're going to go ahead and hit start. Again, I'm in the 5e rule set. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the start button. And it's going to launch the program. And it usually only takes probably 10, 15 seconds, depending on how much content you have. For my particular case, I have a ton of content. So Fantasy Grounds has to look through my library and load all that stuff in as far as the library uh, changes that I've made. So it looks for any changes that I've made since the last time I've logged in. And also it may be loading up different extensions and stuff if I decided that I was going to include extensions in my particular session. So session wise, Fantasy Grounds is unique. So if you set up one session, it's not necessarily gonna carry over to the, to the next. It really depends. So now you're presented with this campaign setup, which is a really nice way to get started in the Fantasy Grounds uh, platform. It is a kind of a shortcut. I can also scale the UI. So if you can see, this looks like I have a lot of room. Um, usually that's a fight for most people, but I can go ahead and scale this up. So I'm gonna uh, type in the chat window, scale UI, which is only gonna scale this particular campaign for me. 
and it is going to make it so that uh, you'll be able to see a little better. So I'm going to go up to 95%. At, I was at 85. I don't need to run it that small. I got a better monitor now. So when I hit enter, it's going to essentially scale up the, the graphics so I don't have to zoom in anymore and it kind of makes it easier for the rest of you to see. So that that uh, command is a right slash scale UI and you put a number value between like about 70 all the way up to 120 if you want. But the mo the larger you, you make it, the less real estate you'll have for the screen. So you got to kind of balance that out. The other thing is it, there are some customizable dice. So if you want to change the color of the dice, you can do that. So if I go into the library and I go to dice, there is a newer feature. This is where you can actually start purchasing dice sets. These are unique to each account. So if your players want their own, they have to have an account and they'll have to buy their own. But you get a way to customize your dice and you also get these elemental basics. Those are things that, that all players and users will get. And I think the metal ones potentially, but then anything after that is gonna be purchased. So some of these are customizable. Some of these are solid state. You can change the color of the dice and the text. You can also eliminate dice. So if you don't want this D100, you can shadow that out and it will only show the dice that you want to show. And then on top of that, you can reskin this a little bit with different colors only. So if I want to change the default color right now, it's set to black. So if I wanted to, I can use a color picker and let's say I want it to be purple. I'll hit OK and then the text. I can change that to like, let's say I want to go with a yellowish or a green color. So hit OK and it'll save that between sessions. And you can also bookmark that. So if you drag and drop that to your hotkeys and you click on default, that, that'll be your default color essentially. But let's just say you purchased one of the add-on animation packs. So here's the, the shadow. So if you wanted to switch quickly to that dice, you can. And then when you roll it, you get the fancy effects. So it's pretty cool. So you, could, you do have dice customization options, but just remember that this is for each account. So you don't, if you buy this as the GM, you don't get to share all the animation with your friends. They'll get to see it, but they don't get to add or change that to their dice. So they have to buy that themselves. But nonetheless, this is a um, really cool way to kind of set up your immersion, your account, and kind of make things a little bit nicer for yourself. So that's the dice kind of in a real basic nutshell. There's other things you can do, like assign special dice for damage types and all kinds of fun stuff. So in the campaign setup, this is essentially the first page that comes up. This is going to direct you to a user guide or to the forum. So if you click on one of these links, it's going to take you straight to some help. Let me go ahead and click on the next button. This is going to basically get you to the data that you want to load initially. So if you don't own anything and you just started Fantasy Grounds and you don't want to buy a bunch of books, you can load the SRD for the 5th edition rule set. So if I click on 5e SRD, it's going to load the system reference document. It's basically a pared down monster manual, the basic data and some magic items. The only real difference is, is that you don't get all the fancy proprietary Wizards of the Coast copyright art or monsters. There's a few that are actually owned by them. And that's essentially what, what you'll load there. And what this translates into is when you load a module, if you come over here to the right under campaign, in some cases you'll have story entries that you'll be able to look at, but in this case the SRD doesn't have one. But some of the modules or most of them have story entries, there's images, there's all kinds of stuff. But essentially when you load something like that, you can come to your library and go to modules. And over here you will see that the, the bestiary is available. And if you click on that, you'll see on the right that you can come to the reference manual. You open that up and then you have your library here. And what you'll notice with the SRD, it doesn't have a lot of artwork. So well, you won't see a whole lot of fancy, pretty art. But nonetheless, this can get you kind of started, just kind of navigate through. Also, Smiteworks does provide some real basic stuff. So if you come over to the assets, you can look in there to see what kind of tokens and, and different features that they offer. And if I go to the assets, or the, excuse me, the modules again, and go to activation, 
there's a couple things I recommend that you load. So they have a calendar that you can use either in game or regular. So you can load that. There is a map pack. So there's like a real generic basic map pack that comes with fantasy grounds. It kind of gives you just a rough idea of what, what the maps, um, are represent, uh, in, in fantasy grounds. So these are just the real, uh, generic map packs that, that you would get with, uh, with fantasy grounds when you first start they're they're nothing special but they are um useful to get kind of get familiar with things so i'm going to go ahead and hit load and like i said these were created a long time ago so maybe at some point they'll get a new map pack but essentially this is uh where i'm going to load anything that i want to activate so if you own an official module like player's handbook and it is a separate purchase <coughs> going to go ahead and type in players because you have a searchable field here and then go ahead and cl click load you can search by author there's a page so you can page through the content that you want whatever it is that you need but I went ahead and loaded the player's handbook and it's going to show up over here in the library so this is how you activate modules and any of these with the green check mark are going to be automatically shared with your players so if you load that book and your players log on to the table, they'll have access to the player's handbook, which will allow you to start building characters, that sort of thing. If you're only going to load the SRD, you're going to have very limited character options. So I wouldn't plan on building a bunch of characters unless you are um, a little bit more familiar with Fantasy Grounds, and then you can kind of enter that data yourself. And that way you don't necessarily have to buy all the content. But nonetheless, you load that up. And if there's anything you don't want, like let's say, if you have the player's handbook in this case, you really don't need the SRD data. If I go back to activation and I use the load filter on the bottom right, it can filter out the library and only show the stuff that I have loaded. So I don't need the SRD, so I'll unload that because it's redundant information. And then I'll leave everything else. So this would be my basic recommendation for Fantasy Grounds if you're gonna use D&D is just get the player's handbook and kind of just explore with that. And, and once you have that down, then start practicing building characters. So we'll move on to, to that sort of thing. So if we load this player's handbook and we have a, a little bit of content that's free from Fantasy Grounds, this is a really good start. You have a basic bestiary with some monsters and you have some magic items. So that's not buying the monster manual. I didn't buy the... the uh, dungeon master's guide any of that stuff just the player's handbook and then i have some content that already comes with fantasy grounds so that's that's okay that's if you bought the, the the player's handbook and a full license that wasn't on sale you might be out 200 bucks up front or if you did the subscription you, you're looking at like 30 bucks for the book roughly and then you're looking at like ten dollars a month so it's comparable there's other people that complain it's too much that I'm not going to get into that debate uh, too much might be too little I don't know but nonetheless if you just get this basic setup I think this will get be a good start like I said if you do a subscription you can cancel it you can ask for a refund if you do it within 30 days uh, Steam has a different policy so if you don't like what you're getting or you're too confused or you don't want to deal with it you can always ask for a refund in 30 days but on Steam it's a little different so you might have to do it more immediate now that I have the player's handbook loaded, you can open up the reference manual, which is on the right in the, in the modules library, and you can go through the book just like you would a PDF or the hardback. So if you pull the reference manual over, click on the preface or the intro, you'll see that you have all of these different um, pictures and artwork. So this is what you're getting essentially when you buy the official content. You get rollable tables, it's all kinds of cool stuff. So then you have these page buttons. You can actually page through the content. If you wanted to look up languages or something like that, you can do a search here in the search field on the bottom, hit enter. And when you come down to this list, there's a language here. So this kind of filters it out. And you have this whole content here that you can look at. You can pop this page out of the reference manual and you can even drag and drop this down to the hotkeys. So later on, if you close all this stuff down, 
you can bring that up without having to go back into the reference manual. So it's kind of a nice way to bookmark things and to do some research while you're building your campaign or creating characters. So there, there's that. So there's nice drag and drop features where you can actually drag things into this toolbar at the bottom. And there are other uh, combinations like Alt, Shift, and Tab will give you different uh, toolbar shortcuts. So it just depends on how many you need. I try to just use the first 12. I think sometimes it can get a little excessive, but nonetheless, it, it's, it's a nice tool to have. It's a good feature and it's very handy, especially when you're getting used to the interface. The other thing you can do is customize the interface. So right now, this is kind of the default. If you want to, you can take and expand or shrink this chat window. Normally, I don't need it this big. So this is the default spot and the default sizing. But if you right click on it, and a lot of things in Fantasy Grounds are right click. So if you remember that, it'll help a lot. So I'm gonna unlock the positioning of it. And essentially, you can make this any size you want um, within reason, of course. And then I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down. And like I said, it's this bottom right corner. And I went ahead and right clicked and unlocked it. So this gives me the ability to size the window the size I want. I don't normally need a very tall chat window, just maybe maybe half the size and we'll call it good. When I want to roll dice, I can just roll here. This is your dice tray essentially. And it's also your chat window. So you can type things in here and send those to the players so they can read it. You can send narration out. You can do the chat bubbles in the games, which will send text over that are related to your content. You also have this drop down list. So if you have a rule set loaded, in most cases there's a language list. So if I wanted to speak Elvish, I could drop down to Elvish and I can say something to the players. And if I hit enter, it will put the translation in here and also give you this fancy font or maybe some garbled text if your players don't understand that. So that's more dependent on the character sheets. But nonetheless, that's how that works. Next thing I'm going to cover is a little bit more of this interface interaction. So I've opened up this, this chat window. Once I have it in place, I'm going to go ahead and lock it. If you use a dice tray, or you like to use a dice tray, come up to the top right in the actual um, the, the uh, options, you'll be able to see that dice tray. I'm actually going to load a pointer, make this a little easier so that you can follow along. Uh, and it won't be so such a burden and it's so difficult to see what, what's going on. So I'm going to activate my little pointer here because I think it's important that uh, I share this with you that you'll be able to see what's going on. So I'll go ahead and minimize this and there we go. So over here on the top right is where the um, all your changes are. You can collapse this toolbar by using this arrow on the right so you can actually make this very small if you need the space and then you can re-expand it. So you got like basically three positions here. So quite often people get kind of upset because they, they're running out of room on the desktop so that's one way to kind of help get gain a little bit more uh, table space so that's collapsible and I was going to go into the uh, character generator but in the options here I can turn on the dice tray so right now it says chat show GM roll so that's on by default so if I roll in the chat it's gonna actually show the, the rolls now if I turn on the dice tower and that'll appear over here on the bottom right. I can right click on it, unlock it, and move it wherever I want. In this case, I usually move it over here next to the dice to make it convenient for me. Now, I usually place it right under this, this chat area. You don't have to put anything here like the way I'm showing you, but this makes it a little easier. And I'm gonna go ahead and unlock that and kind of lock everything back up so I can't accidentally move it. So it's all in position right now. You can also unlock the dice tray. So if you don't like where the dice are located, you can move those too. I'm gonna to go ahead and put that back. And then the other thing is you can you can locate these modifiers on the bottom left. So the modifier box allows you to apply advantage on a roll. So if I click ADV, it'll automatically roll two die and drop the lowest. Or disadvantage, same thing, but opposite. So it'll it'll take off the highest roll and then if you right click when you pick up a dice you can roll more than one 
So if I wanted to, I can right click on the 10 sided or I can pick it up and right click and add more dice to it. So it just depends on what your needs are and what you're rolling for. But there's all kinds of cool things you can do with dice and moving windows around and all kinds of stuff. But that essentially is how you would you would uh, change things. So you also have a user color, which changes your pointers that you're going to use on a map. And also you have background decals with some of the rule sets. You can also make your own. But when you click on a background decal, we're assuming that you have content that's going to provide you with background decals. You know, like I said, you can also import your own text and you can make your own content if you need to. So, for example, I do have the art pack subscription, so I get all these little fancy decals and backgrounds. Some of these are actually pretty new. And then there's some that are themed for the actual rule set, like there, this is for the Curse of Strahd, or you, you, know, you can use that symbol there. Here's one that was created exclusively for Fantasy Grounds, so you have one with a logo, one without, do that sort of thing. So my favorite one, I think, if uh, out of the new decal set, is the one, it, it's a Fantasy Grounds one, and it, it just has plain brown letters, but I think it looks really sharp. Uh, it looks really good in the, in the interface. So there's all these different artworks coming from different content that I've purchased over the months and years. So you're not gonna start off with all this, but essentially, if you get the art subscription and you own content, you'll have more options, or like I said, you could build your own. So this is probably my favorite one here. This one looks pretty sharp, like that one. And then you can also import your own images. So if you open up the assets folder and you click on images on the top here, there is a folder here. And this is called, uh, your, this is the back end of Fantasy Ground. So I'll bring that into view. Essentially you can add images from the back end if you wanna add maps or NPCs or you know pictures or stuff for more immersion, you can do so. And also when I'm, you know, as I'm doing this, I wanted to show you an image that, that you can like, you know, actually show how it works. So I'm bringing in an image that I imported earlier today. Uh, so Brad helped me create this. So this is just a, a picture of someone sitting at the desk. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the folder along with these other ones. I might as well grab them all. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab uh, and close that. And now when I hit the refresh button, it's going to create a folder called campaign and these are the, the images that are unique to your actual campaign. So if I click on campaign, I'm going to click on on one of these images. So this is a preview. So this gives me an idea of what I'm actually loading before I commit to it. I can set this as my background decal and I can also take this and and bring it in as an image. So if I I want to use something like this for my games and not just a background image. I can add it to the images uh, location here to share with my player. So if I click uh, uh, create image record, it's going to create a new image in this list here. So if I go to the uncategorized list, I have this image also so that I can share it with my players. So essentially, this is a way to, to you can bring in your own pictures if you want and this is a nice feature um, and this kind of gets you away from the proprietary artwork so a lot of times you can't do much with that other than just maps and stuff so this gives you more flexibility to bring in your own tokens your own npc images or your own maps so that's how you would do that and depending on what the kind of content is is where you would put the content itself so if, if you open up the assets again you'll notice there's tokens portraits and images so images covers everything except for your character portraits and your character tokens. So they are separate. So that is how you basically import something that you know that you would want to put in your game. The next thing is uh, once you've loaded your books and you kind of got everything set up, you might want to build characters. So I'm not going to build a full-fledged character, but if you go to the player drop down here on the right and you click on characters. You're going to get this character wizard or you can create a character manually the character wizard is going under some heavy construction right now i don't know if i'd necessarily show it or teach it but it is an option that you can do to make character creation a lot quicker so when i mean quicker i mean 
probably anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes quicker depending on your your familiarity with the platform but essentially you have a way to roll characters so this shows a standard array or I can actually do a dice roll so I'm gonna roll the dice and then it will assign based on the order rolled you can actually move these if you want or if you want to manually enter them you can do that so you can manually come in here and change them so I might go with a uh, eight let's go with a 14 and a 15 and let's go with 11 or 12 and 13 and a 10 so that's essentially the standard array 15 14 13 12 and 8 and then once you've done that and you've satisfied the stats this doesn't count the racial adjustments yet, but then you go to the racial part and you're going to select your race. So I'm going to go with a, I'm going to do a monk. So maybe I will do a, let's go with a tiefling. So there's a tiefling monk and then you can pick the racial modifier. So you're going to get intelligence and charisma up front. This doesn't have Tasha's loaded, so I don't have the flexibility right now. Uh, so if I had Tasha's and I had some other content, I would be able to choose those instead of having it assigned. And if I go to class, I'm going to pick a monk. So I'm going to click a monk. And then once I do that, you'll get this drop down for some of your monk's tool proficiencies. So I want to go with a, uh, let's go with a cartographer's tools for proficiency. And then I get to pick two others. So I'm going to go with acrobatics and athletic and that should take care of a lot of things that he needs to do in combat and then if you're going to multi-class you do that at this time and if you come over to backgrounds now you get to choose a background so let's see i'm going to make this particular individual a let's see maybe since he's more into like athletics and stuff maybe he was a gladiator which is kind of cool then I get to pick an actual um, tool proficiency, so I'm going to go with a drum, I think, because he used to play like a war drum. And what happens is since I picked this background of Gladiator, it overlaps with some of my class skills. So I got to go back to class, and I get to pick another one. So I'm going to pick Stealth as my other, because I already have been given that with one of my other choices so it does kind of keep track of that which is nice and once I'm done if I had any feats to choose I could do that you click on inventory this is where you can actually choose your starting equipment so I'm gonna instead of purchasing I'm just gonna go with the Explorers pack and I get a choice of my first weapon so I'm gonna go with the quarter staff and my second choice for a background item is the drum itself so I want I want the actual drum and then that's it and then I hit commit but I want to go ahead and give this a name so I'm gonna put level one monk and I, I recommend you do this because after a while you're gonna get confused what's what so I'm gonna go with level one monk but I'm gonna put D&D &D or some kind of uh, thing in here so maybe um, we'd put the, the type of monk or whatever you want to do but at least put level one monk there so you know what what you have for a naming convention and once you're done you hit commit and that brings you to the character sheet at this point your players can pick a portrait so if I click on the portrait it'll bring up these portraits here there are a ton of new portraits that were just added but I'm gonna go ahead and go to the fantasy grounds fantasy folder which is essentially a bunch of free portraits that you can use if you don't want to bring in your own and if you do bring in your own, make sure it's a small square photo. It doesn't need to be a big, huge, high definition photo because it's just a small area. So this is a uh, tiefling. So I want to go check out the tiefling. So if I scroll down and get a little bit further into the down here, maybe there'll be something. Let's see, that's undead. But nonetheless, you can come down here and pick whatever is available or like so you can bring in your own just make it so it's not huge that's that's the main thing. we'll just do unknown female fantasy character i don't know what she's going to, it's going to be a female 
So for right now, we'll just have that unknown image. And then you can customize these characters by adding, like in this case, she gets some darts. So maybe she's got five darts on her and the quarter staff. You can add any of the, uh, if you have customized scripts or actions, you can add those back here. And as you build your character, more features will be added as you level up and that sort of thing. So that's just a real basic overview of creating a character as Fantasy Grounds is now. So this uh, character creator that I showed you is going to change, so we'll see how it turns out. But that's how you can do that for right now, or you can do the old drag and drop method, which is a little bit more manual process. The next step is to load modules, and we've already done that uh, as far as rule books go, but if you have any modules, you can activate those and go ahead and set those up. I'm going to bring up the combat tracker, which is important for um, tracking all the stuff that's going on in the game and your players. So once your characters are built and your players have selected the characters, from the characters panel, all you're going to do is add the character to the actual combat tracker. And if you're going to play in a long-term campaign, there is the party sheet. And this keeps track of the whole group as a whole, so and add that to the party sheet as well. So this is kind of the way that you would set up your campaign. So you get the interface set up, load all your books, build characters, get kind of proficient with that, and then start getting prepared to run your session zero. So you build characters, you get uh, kind of familiar with the character sheets. Usually it only takes two or three sessions to really tell the character sheet sinks in. I've seen a lot of people online make comments about how difficult it is. It's really not when you actually use it. Um, and, and quite often, half the people that make those comments haven't even used Fantasy Ground, or they haven't used it to its full potential. So um, take it with your own your, your own advice. You know, if you, if you think it's difficult, you know, we have a community that will help you with it. And if it's something that you need immediate help with, you can always jump into the Fantasy Grounds Academy or you can go on to the official Discord or even in there and get help there. So it's it's not the end of the world if you can't figure it out in one session. The other thing is uh, when you start building your characters and you start leveling up and stuff, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna have problems. I mean, that's normal. It's, any platform is gonna give you that problem. One thing I can mention about Fantasy Grounds, it's pretty consistent. It does have some bugs once you start introducing third-party content sometimes those those clash or they need to be updated I'm usually pretty good about that unlike other platforms where there's just like 50,000 things you have to keep track of it's a lot less uh, of that going on in fantasy grounds a lot of the content is prepared for you like you don't normally have to go in and do a bunch of work unless you're going to do home stuff in that case yes you'll have to import your own images you'll have to bring in your own content you know, you'll have to do some of the text and formatting and such, but once you understand how that stuff works, it's not too bad. You might um, get it down to about an hour of prep. That's usually reasonable uh, when it comes to, you know, someone who wants to be organized. So this is essentially a um, real quick overview of how to get started in Fantasy Grounds. I'm not really going to show you how to play D&D &D or how to run a game in this session. It's more or less how to get started in Fantasy Grounds. Well, hopefully this helps you. Uh, happy holidays, and I hope to see you guys around in the community. Again, this is uh, Lairon with the Fantasy Grounds Academy. Uh, you can search for us on YouTube or all over the place, and also Google and, and that sort of thing. So we have tutorials. We have a website. We've got all the socials. So you guys take care. Happy